uh, here with Admiral Sood, who's the CEO of EquiVital. Hi there. Hi Tim, how are you doing? So great session, and it's a new year. And I'm really curious to see what's going to happen with human mobile monitoring from your perspective going into the future. Sure. So these systems are being used quite extensively now in military and professional marketplaces and B2B environments such as uh, military hazardous worker environments and pharmaceutical clinical trials. But what we're actually seeing is that the creation and development and, in and innovation of data intelligence and what we term actionable information, that is information being provided that can lead to someone performing a particular yeah. action, yeah. is actually a thing that's going to drive the adoption of these particular systems and products into the consumer marketplace, the healthcare marketplace, and other widespread markets. Yeah, because I look at there's 100 plus thousand, 140,000 people or something like that here. I guess what percentage? Nobody's really wearing much set, many sensors right now. Or it's, it's still nascent. It's still at a nascent stage. You're absolutely right. But you know, if you if you look at the terms M Health and E Health and what people you know the kind of buzzwords they're looking at, actually the power to understand your own body, your own physiology has been invented since uh, you know Google and the internet have been around. Because yeah. as soon as you're ill, the first thing most people do is type into Google and say, these are my symptoms, what, yeah, what, are, the, yeah, what are the potential yeah, yeah. causes? So you're already empowering the consumer with some information. Then people are using in sports and fitness training things like heart rate monitors. We're a step above that in that actually what we focus on is multiple parameters of data, contextualizing that data, that's combining it to give some kind of, and using data intelligence to give some kind of valuable and useful output that, uh, that a user can use either you know, themselves or if they give advice to someone else. And Sonny Boo was saying that's the hard part, is getting the data is getting easier and easier. It's how do you actually make actionable intelligence and then systems that people will get benefit from? What's, yeah. what's going on there? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, advancements in sensor technology and software yeah. analysis and software tools has meant that now acquiring data noise-free from different environments is becoming easier and easier. But actually what's more interesting is when you have these large data sets, so we have a database called the Vitaly database that is able yeah. to aggregate and then mine uh, large collected data sets. So when you have these large data sets, now That's I want great. to start, now I want to start, you know, mining it and analyzing it and looking at patterns and looking at yeah. different angles and respects of, you know, what can I learn from this data? What does it tell me about predictive health about performance measurements, about well-being, about safety, you know, these kind of things. That's really where, so, so pattern, algorithms, intelligence creation, that's really where, where the challenge now lies. Interesting, so lots of heavy math and in, in, in really taking stuff to the next level. What are you personally trying to get out of the Digital Health Summit this year? Sure, so um, this year, actually, well, in 2012 now, uh, we are actually fortunate enough to be involved with the Red Bull, Red Bull Stratosphere Jump. Oh, where, yeah, yeah, you were, you were, your sensors were on. Yeah, yeah so we, right, we yeah. were actually monitoring um, Felix Baumgartner when he was jumping and that gave us huge exposure. What we're actually looking at and why, why we're here is really to you know, understand more about what are other people in the ecosystem actually yeah. providing, yeah. what are they developing, what are they innovating because we know that we can't do this alone. There has to be a large push from the industry and the sector as a whole and partnerships, collaborations and things like that will be massively important. So understanding what are the future technology trends, not just in healthcare, actually what we're looking at is what are people doing in other parallel sectors that actually could come into healthcare as well. So how would people reach you if they want to connect with you? Uh, our website is www.equivital.co.uk. That's E-Q-U-I-V-I-T-A-L. Uh, we're based in Cambridge in the UK, so the best way would actually be to contact us through our website. Uh, you can Google Equivital and, and you know, reach us because we would be delighted to hear from anyone who has, even if you have just an interest and want to learn more about what we're doing, perfect you know we love to talk to people about what we do and we're very very passionate about what we do and it's so cool to have folks like you because the red bull thing was a huge deal it was the biggest televised uh internet show ever yeah absolutely so. well, what, did, what did you i mean just before we go like what did you what, what kind of sensor data was going off what was going on with his physiology when he was dropping at a million miles an hour. Yeah, so we were actually involved with the, uh, the Red Bull jump for about two years. Um, we, were, we were recommended by NASA. Uh, we got working with the Red Bull team. So we actually worked with Felix and his, his own personal physiologist and the Red Bull team for uh, about 18 months trying to understand how could we use this system, how could we use the data, and what use would it have, and then actually during the trial jumps as well. What we actually saw was, you know, in, in summary, and there's a lot of data that I could talk through, but in summary, Felix at the age of 43 is a very, very fit individual yeah. who was carrying 30 kilograms of weight whilst undergoing all those different uh, stresses and strains of, you know, falling at supersonic speed, it, exactly, actually performs at the level that you would expect a 43-year-old in everyday fitness and training. So 
you know, heart rate of about 140 to 160 beats a minute, uh, breathing rates of somewhere between 40 and 60 beats a minute, yeah, breaths a minute. So, so absolutely great data, very, very fit person and someone who obviously has trained for a long time to be able to put his body through something like that. Cool. Well, there's so much to talk about. I know you want to go run and see what else is going on here. So thanks so much for your time and being on the panel. Cheers. Thank you.